Hey guys, I am here at the studio for a very special bonus presentation video. I am here with the homie. He's been on the show for the most times on the Rodriguez show. Just keep coming. And well, we're here to talk about Skyfall. This is Kid Vista. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm good. Yeah, uh, this is not a regular show segment. We're just hanging out in the studio. Yeah, you know, kicking it. Yeah. Kicking and digging. How you been, man? I know that uh, the past year, like life has been like changing for you. Uh, you know. Yeah, like, man, it's definitely been like a big transitional period. Transitional period. That, yeah. that sounds weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's just been a lot of changes within the last couple, like two months. Even it's been pretty mm-hmm. crazy. But you know, all things considered, it's been good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Do you feel like you're in a in a better place than you were? Yeah, I'd say I'm a lot less stressed, but you know, there's always room for room for growth, room for improvement. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, man, uh, you've been on the show a bunch of times, and and uh, you're always a, a guest on the show that and we that we enjoy having. Um, and you were particular. You were like on the show when I went to Italy and shit like that, man. There's a long <laughs> history of the show, so I appreciate you, uh, you know, opening up about this album that you're releasing, Skyfall. Um, how long have you been working on it? Uh, it's been like a concept in the back of my head for like, I don't know, two years. Mm-hmm. I know when I came on and rapped to the fucking Pusha T beat, I mentioned it in there too. Yeah. I, know, I listed off like three projects of which none have actually dropped yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been like in the back of my head for a while. <clears throat> but uh, I'd say honestly putting the work into it probably within like the last six seven months mm, yeah gotcha. yeah the the one of the probably before we get into it more uh, i wanted to ask about feast or famine right that was another one that <laughs> there's a whole release yeah. party but it hasn't come out yet. whole right? release party <laughs> whole tour yeah. no nah, it's chilling man yeah, yeah it, it, it'll it'll come when it comes you know yeah just about letting this stuff come out naturally yeah yeah and there's a couple couple last things we really want to like tie off really yeah. square this one away Nice, nice. So the name Skyfall. Why? Why did I know that there's been uh, you know themes of like airplanes and like being in the air and, and your past projects. So yeah. Why? Why Skyfall for this one? Skyfall was supposed to like be like a thematic follow up to Turbulence, mm-hmm. and then once uh, well, around the time we made Wilson Street, me and Mikey, uh, Mikey had handed me a couple beats, one of which became Keep Pushing. And I kind of felt like the connection between that and the Skyfall project I was formulating in my head. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't think it's going to work as a follow-up to Turbulence. Mm-hmm. It's its own thing, and Mikey's going to make all the beats. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but uh, the name itself is actually from uh, the West Side Boogie and Black song. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah, I think I've heard that song. Um so so yeah so Skyfall uh, Mikey it's, it, how how did you start working with him? Mikey, I mean, I've been he's been rapping with me for years. He got introduced to me through another friend who uh, you know we're falling out. We don't really hang out with him, but Mikey ended up being a lot more talented than the other guy, and I kind of <laughs> just stuck with him, kept pushing him. You know, he's a He's, uh, he's always willing to learn and push himself. He hasn't been feeling rap lately, but he felt the creative spark to make beats and mm-hmm. nailed a bunch out. Yeah, I was going to ask. Like, uh, he's usually rapping, or, uh, so it's cool that he did, like, he so he did all the beats for Skyfall. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he I remember made all of them. You sending me Keep Pushing, like, a long time ago. Yeah. Before even... The, that the, one it was, was supposed to be for Wilson Street, and we didn't touch it in, like, the sessions, so mm-hmm. I kind of just pulled up some beats one day, just fucking around with stuff and i was like yo what are you planning to do with this one he's like nothing it's yeah. yours <laughs> so i send him back the song and he's like all right cool let's drop it mm-hmm. and i was like sweet and at that time that was just a lucy yeah but it ended up being what sparked skyfall nice and at the time of this recording we're recording in the middle of april uh it hasn't dropped yet the project but you just performed it last weekend how was that it was awesome man it was a it was a really good lineup. We even had the uh, Doobie Dean, who's like the owner of FTG, yeah. and I didn't know he like also rapped until he went up there, and I was like, that dude's pretty sick. But uh, yeah, we had the homie uh, Arm the poet come from Oceanside well, Vista. Uh, he corrected me when I said that last <laughs> time. There was a bunch of homies, and like it really came out really well. It was a lot better turnout than I 
thought would happen the day before Easter. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the people who came really reacted to the project well. It was different than most of my performances because a lot of mine are just like super energetic, yelling, jumping around, braggadocious, fuck you rap. Mm-hmm. And this was a lot more like personal, more I got a story to tell. And you may or may not stick around to listen to it. Yeah. But they did. Nice. There was one girl who yawned in the crowd, so I called her out. You did? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't think she liked it. <laughs> was it was it like was it late or was it was it like reasonable? A I mean, reasonable by the yawn? time I was up there, it was like eleven twenty, so I understood. <laughs> I was just like, You look tired. <laughs> she was like embarrassed and I was like, It's cool, I get it. It's late. It's yeah. late. <laughs> you look tired. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so in terms of the subject matter, like you said, you had a story to tell and you, uh, you told me, uh, leading up to this, that this was about the passing of your grandfather yeah. and even the, the intro, the first song, like it, it started, you, you say that at the beginning that you, you feel sad about, or what is the lyric about you regret? It hurts to know my wife will never meet my grandpa yeah. at the show. I fucked it up. The first line I said, it hurts to know my mom will never meet my grandma. Oh. It's like the fifth bar is about my mom, and I fucked it all up. Oh, and I don't think anybody noticed except yeah. my mom. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's been eight years um, since, that, since he passed away. Well, how did you, um, why did you decide to write about this now? I think a lot of it definitely was sparked by a... Uh, uh, the big uh, fucking what Kendrick's album called? Oh, uh, Mr. Morale, the big step. Yeah, I was gonna flip it the other way. That like just seeing the willingness to be vulnerable on that sparked a lot of that in me. I think also turning thirty this year, it's just like seems like a big milestone, you know. Yeah. And then quitting the job at Petco, just a bunch of shit changed, and I was like, well, this is a good time to like search for growth you know yeah there was a lot of like feelings i hadn't really addressed i guess internally Mm -hmm. because when he passed we were on the plane out here from virginia to see him so i never got to see him oh wow yeah what what impact did he have on your uh your life for the longest time he was like a real like father figure because my real dad was never around and then as my brother's dad came about he was in and out of our lives a lot it wasn't until my sister's dad came around, who's my stepdad, who I consider my dad, that we really had a solid fa- father <laughs> father figure. So, like, my grandpa kind of took that spot. And uh, so not really getting to say bye was hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can relate to that in a sense because um, when – so my dad passed away in 2009 – uh, and he he was always sick on and off, like he had kidney problems, so he'd be in and out of the hospital. So the the last time that he was sick, he like I I thought like he was gonna get better, and so I never really like I was a little bit more I separated myself a little bit from him because I just didn't want to deal with th- like the emotions of like oh worrying about that he was sick because I always knew he got better, mm-hmm. and then that was the one time that he didn't. So it's like I know holding on to that like, and though I did I did I did get a chance when he was in the hospital bed before they took him off life support to tell him like. Thank you. It's just, you know, obviously he was in a, I didn't, I'm not obviously you don't know that he was in a coma, so he didn't respond. So it's like you, there's a way to get that goodbye without the person having to like necessarily hear it or like be there. And it's just about processing it. Yeah. You know? Um, And so did you find yourself like, you know, dealing with those emotions as you were writing the songs? Yeah, definitely a lot. Like uh, not even just the emotions of, uh, not having the chance to have said goodbye, but like the emotions of him having been there growing up, and like it was the good and the bad. Yeah. And I feel like the album, there's a lot of that, um, not just in this situation, but in a lot of the situations I cover. But it was definitely cathartic. Mm-hmm. You know, it was good to like talk about some of these things, uh, even if it wasn't to somebody, because a lot of the sessions, me and Mikey weren't even in together. Mikey would send me a beat, so I would just be in there by myself. And I don't know, sometimes that's easier. But uh, yeah. yeah, I feel like it was a really good uh, processing exercise. Nice, nice. And then, and then so and you said like it wasn't just, it, 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 it was there other themes in, in there too that you covered in the album? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different, um, I would say overall, a lot of the stories are about just, separation between people whether like 
I would say in that sense wasn't it was a separation by death. You know, he mm-hmm. passed away. But there, I've talked about like people who used to be at, like best friends with me, who I had issues with, uh, ex girlfriends. Just cover a lot of stuff that's happened within like the last, I'd say, ten years, not eight. Yeah. Little before he passed away, but yeah, yeah. And it, 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 I guess just you know, growing up from being from twenty to thirty, like you said, like it's like it's it's just your life changes because oh, yeah. even though we've had different lives, I feel like there is a lot of loss that I've had too. Like people just fade away in your life, yeah. And and I guess it's a matter of like growing up and and but how do you deal with that? Like obviously, like losing friends, losing people you care about uh, in different ways. Like how do you deal with the loneliness of it sometimes? It's hard, man, but, you know, like, there, you still find those, like, key few people, you know? Like, my wife, and as I've grown up, my mom has been, like, our relationships got really good. I can count on my brother and my sister, which, you know, like, even in the album I said not all family is blood, so I'm not saying, like, all my family, but I've got really good connection with them. I've got really good friends. I consider you guys really good friends too. So there's just people you can depend on. And, you know, at some point you just got to learn to accept that not everything's permanent. You know, people come, people go. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's tough too. Cause I, I, I I deal with that too, where I'm like, Oh, like I really want to hang out with people and then they're not available. But at the same time, I'm like, well, when am I available too? You know, like (laughs) life gets really crazy as you get older, the responsibilities just keep growing. Yeah. Um, so so when you when you perform the songs or even now like when you're listening to them do you still get the same emotion or is it just kind of like a healed a little bit I'd say when I performed it was probably the like most cathartic experience even more than putting it together cuz like I like to I don't know, I mean obviously perform but like I'm very expressive with my performances, whether it's energy, face. So I feel like I, and you know, I take a little bit of edibles to really get into it before too. But I just feel like I really like sunk in to what I was saying. Whereas, especially like the last month or so listening to it, I'm not really listening for the lyrics. I'm listening to hear like the mix. Mm -hmm. So I haven't really been paying attention too much to that. I've been trying to flesh out what sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of, of like the technical aspects of it, do you did all the mixing yourself? Yeah. Nice. How long did that take? Uh, you know, as of the recording, I'm still finishing that up. Yeah. I just got like some mastering, but uh, recording, mixing, mastering, I'd say probably like a total of, I don't know, I want to say like a month and a half. Yeah. Because yeah. cause like something that I've asked people that like do it you know mo- primarily as their thing like it's just subjective right it's like how you want there's yeah. obviously a good way to hear it. it has to sound clear and stuff but it's how you want it to come out right yeah there's no right or wrong way but you know there's a there's a clear bad mix <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we I've, know what that sounds yeah, like yeah <laughs> i've made i've made quite a few in the years of uh doing this but as a uh, Working with Andy and like kind of learning over his shoulder and working with Mellow Thing, learning over them, I've kind of like picked things up. Yeah. 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 Some great people that you're mentioning. Yeah. Uh, legends. So, so speaking of that, like what are, you, what are the features that you got on here? Uh, well, YBG is like a intro feature. Uh, I don't know if you could really consider it a feature. I consider it because yeah. it's cool how he starts it off. Yeah, like, he told yeah. me he always wanted to be a weatherman. So <laughs> I told him to do some Chicken Little type shit. Yeah. Uh, he did the little Skyfall intro before the before the beat drops. Uh, we got Eddie Ryan. Me and him, we got together to work on a song for a sync opportunity. Mm-hmm. And it, it didn't end up working out. But... Uh, I was like, why not work on something that we could actually use in case this doesn't work out? So I was like, I got this song. And at the time, it was me and two verses and nice. no open. It was just a two-verse song. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'll stretch this out, let you get in the middle. And he laid it down real quick. And the thing about Eddie is anytime we perform, he forgets about the song until, like, <laughs> <laughs> until I remind him. Yeah. So he forgot that he was even on that song multiple times. <laughs> He told me the other day that, that he was going to perform that song. I saw him earlier before the yeah, show. Yeah, because he, was like he went over it. Yeah. <laughs> he was trying to work on that. Uh, so, yeah, but back to White BG's, uh, perform his intro. Mm. Um, when you So he's talking about the sky is falling. Is that like a theme too? like the idea that like the world is falling apart like in your head? I think not necessarily the world, but it's kind of like 
at the time, it was my world and not necessarily for a bad thing. It was, I was leaving the job I had and I was changing career paths. I was deciding I was going to go a different lane with music. And over the past couple of years, like losing people and just things change and, you know, Sometimes the sky falls. And yeah. I feel like it was appropriate, especially this year, because there was so much rain, and it just kind of worked out, you know? Yeah. Still. Like, I don't yeah. even know when it's going to end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I do find, like, sometimes you... Because, okay, so before, a year ago, I had I was thinking about leaving my job, the one that I've had, that I had for a long time, when I ultimately did do that. But we, Carla and I, we did a tarot reading, and we got one of those cards that said, basically, everything's going to fall apart. Um, and it was like a little bit ominous and we're like, what does that mean? And then when I finally left the job, like it kind of did like the way that I left, it was because things kind of fell apart because of the the pressure that everything had been under. But do you feel like once not obviously, you know, you lost people and that's bad, but once that you go through all those things, like it's kind of cool to have that fresh start. Right. Yeah. I mean, like what's the, what's the phrase? April, April showers bring May flowers, Mm -hmm. you know, it falls, but something something comes out of it always. There's a brighter thing on the other side. Yeah, and like the people that you have in your life right now, like you said, your wife, like they mm. they're people that you know you're you know that they're gonna be there with you for the long run. Yeah, so absolutely. Like, so it's cool to know at least the foundation that you have is yeah. still strong. You know. Um, so who else? Who else do you want to say had helped you? Uh, you know, shape you who you are today from this um, first project. Damn. I know it's a big question. It's yeah, a big question. That is a big question. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I do I do owe a lot to my mom, you know. She's uh she's always been uh there for me even when we were like button heads, getting kicked out. Um my brother, my sister, my cousin Nick's, you know. Mm-hmm. I mentioned him in the last song. Uh he had a baby and that. uh you know, it's just cool seeing him grow up to be the dad that neither of us had, you know? Yeah. And his baby's the fucking cutest thing. She was at the show. We kept her in, like, the, the alleyway, so she wasn't, like, hot box. Oh, yeah. anytime, anytime she could hear people cheering, she was like, woo! <laughs> the music would start, and she'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so, you know, man, I've just... There's a lot of, a lot of people who've helped me be who I am. Yeah, you know? Nice. Um, yeah, shout out to FTG for providing that location. Absolutely. I felt like that was like the perfect place too. It's a very intimate venue. And like, I feel really like the people who run the place are homies because they hit me up to do it. They actually hit me up to do another, another show soon too. So nice. Uh, so well, let's talk about the the track list. I uh, thank you for including me in the progress of you know yeah man sequencing it. Yeah, you're a legend. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I, I I saw it when you told me. I was like hell yeah! Like it's like making a playlist, but the songs are already selected for you. <laughs> you just gotta like tell a story with what you got. Um, so let's go through this. Um, the Skyfall intro. Just whatever the comments you want to make about each song. So this one for sure was gonna start. That was the one you told me for sure it's gonna start. Yeah. It's called the intro, but what what made you decide to make it that? Uh, Mikey sent me a beat, and he's like, this sounds like an intro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, so I'll just write bars straight through. Uh, and I feel like it starts off on like the more somber side, talking about uh, my, my wife never meeting my grandpa, my mom and dad splitting up. But then it gets to like more shit-talky stuff as like the beat builds and... Mm-hmm. I like that one. It's a cool little opening. I was thinking of doing like a stripped down version at the show, but I decided against it. You just did the actual regular yeah. version. Did you have YBG do that intro? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he cool. went up there and he's like, I got a little part on this, so we're going to do it. And <laughs> it was cool. Uh, yeah, that it's that. I mean, back to that feeling of like the people that you care about, like like you said, your wife never meeting your grandpa. It's just, I think about that too, like with my, with Carla and my dad, you know, like, you 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 want that the people to know how special they were in your life yeah exactly it's just but you know you even if you don't believe in like the traditional idea of heaven i feel like the energy is still there you know what i'm saying like yeah and the way that we carry ourselves like and and the way we are it kind of carries on the the legacy their memory too yeah exactly yeah um so the next track on here who talk a little bit about who yeah that's the one with eddie rot in that one um Mikey had just sent me like some hard shit and 
I was trying to flesh out something that could be hard, but also like fit the album and just the idea of who's going to put the work in but me. And the idea just fell through like that. Originally, it was just me on the song, and then Eddie came for that session, and I put him on it. Yeah. And Goons is the homie. He'd jump on whatever. It's true. He's he's so like versatile. Yeah, we got <laughs> we got some other shit coming up that's completely different. Nice. I, yeah, I believe that. And and I've seen the work that he's doing with uh, with Eric Young right now. And like he's just everybody. He's, yeah, he, he's, he's uh, always in a studio. Like he every project, like even on Specs' album, like mm-hmm. he'll pop up, and you're like, damn, like he just adds that extra thing you need. Yeah, Goonie uh, Goons. I put that second too because I I did. I was like, you start with the intro, but then you want to keep the momentum going with some hard shit. And yeah, you slap like, him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then ego with is that Le MC Ore? That's the one. That yeah, he got. yeah, um, that's Ish. That's the homie. Uh, that one was cool. Uh, Mikey had sent me a beat like an hour before Ish pulled up. And we were, he was originally going to be on Law, but uh, we ended up having him, he did two verses, but I was like, I only want one feature, so I'm going to keep you on this one. Uh, But I pulled up the beat, at the time it was an eight bar loop, and I was like, Mikey sent me this, if you're feeling it, and he's like, let's do it. And we laid out a whole song, and Mikey texts me like hours later, he's like, you ever check that beat out? And I was like, you ever check the song out? And we made to it. (laughs) It was cool, like, it kind of, it just fell together and uh ish like said he wanted some like future type auto tune so i was like all right That's turn on turn on yeah <laughs> uh and then uh 1023 why did you call it 1023 that's my birthday oh okay yeah. <laughs> that makes sense yeah it's all about growing up and like you know turning 30 this year yeah yeah how do you and, feel as a 30 year old does it did it change like did you feel different not 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 yet you know i don't think so i feel like more than anything the people around me are more excited about it yeah like oh my god you're turning 30 (laughs) and i was like yeah (laughs) another year yeah but yeah it's definitely one of those i guess like societal milestones you know yeah yeah when i turned 30 i turned 30 in june of last year it was like one of those things where it's like, okay, like it's a number, but at the same time, like, yeah, I'm 30. Like I, I should have my shit together mentally, at least at this point. And fake it till you make it. Like yeah. I was like, I do. <laughs> and then, and then eventually I was like, you know what? I kind of really do. Like I'm, I don't have to pretend anymore. You yeah. know? Uh, and you just come into your own, like who you really are. Like, I feel like at this point you find not necessarily like what you want to do, but like the person you are. You know, For sure, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of I feel like a lot of the twenty two to thirty was that like soul searching, so mm-hmm. to say, figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, next on the track list, keep pushing. Yeah, the single. Yeah. That one, that one just kind of like again, kind of came to me while I was sitting there. I I think I had put together um, urges the same day, so mm-hmm. it was like really different. Uh, two different songs. two different songs, <laughs> and I was just kind of like experimenting with different stuff. Uh, I thought about like making an extended version for the album. I still might because I haven't submitted it just yet, so we'll mm. see. Nice. But that one was cool. I thought uh, I was trying to get Mikey to rap on it, but he's a uh, very adamant about taking a break on rapping right now. <laughs> he would have he would have fit good on that. I I I don't know. I mean, because I guess the themes that you covered, I feel like there's like a melancholy vibe that comes from a lot of these tracks. Yeah. And that was one of the ones, too, that it That's felt like That's Mikey's thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey's thing. Uh, so, yeah, Keep Pushing, definitely a standout on there. Uh, Law, L-A-W. Yeah, Loyalty Always. Uh, that's one of the ones where I had the idea for the song well before, like, the beat or, like, the lyrics. I was listening to Drink Champs, I think. Mm-hmm. can't remember who they were interviewing, but he said, loyalty one way is stupidity. Yeah. And I was like, damn. Like, that's so, like, surface level, but also so, like... True. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote that down in my notes for what I wanted to talk about in the album, because I kind of had just like a list of topics I wanted to cover. And then as it came to Mikey sending me the beat, I was kind of like juggling what words fit best. And it was going to be loyalty one way, but that just didn't fit in an acronym. Mm -hmm. 
So I just changed it to loyalty always. Yeah. So it would be it, law. <laughs> yeah, and then and, and, and still the same thing, like both ways, always, like that's yeah. what it implies. Um, head high. What, what about head high? Head high. That one was a fun one. Uh, Mikey sent me the beat, and that one was, I think, at the time it was a little more fleshed out than just an eight bar loop. So I had like some sort of structure to go off. And originally it was just supposed to be a smoking song. Mm -hmm. So it was about a head high. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But I started just kind of like freestyling ideas. And that one came out to be a lot about like the best friend I had at the time moving from Virginia back out to here who uh, had a falling out with. He like really couldn't take that. I just didn't want to hang out with him anymore as he was getting into some bullshit. And then he was telling my mom I was, like, selling drugs to people, which I wasn't. He told the girl I was dating I was cheating on her, which I wasn't. She destroyed, like, $800 worth of Pokemon cards. Because of that? (laughs) Yeah, you know, I can't necessarily blame her. Yeah. But, like, I wish I had those cards. (laughs) Yeah, that sucks. But, yeah, so that song covered, like, a lot of, like, the past... Well, not I guess not the past, but the last couple months before moving back out here and the falling out with him, uh, just like him trying to fight me at a park, telling me he was going to catch me the next time he saw me. And I was like, I'm right here in front of you. Yeah. This Damn. is the next time. So he was, he's, is he, he's in a dark place? He's still, is he still in that place? You know, the last I talked to him, he hit me up randomly to tell me happy birthday. Surprisingly or not, like yeah. his birthday is the day after mine. So I mm-hmm. think he was kind of like fishing for that. Yeah. As far as I know, everyone that I know doesn't talk to him anymore. Yeah. Last I saw any of his social media accounts, his like avatar was all blacked out and stuff. Mm. And then, you know, I talk about in the album, like I was, Hoping something like that would happen. So, you know, it's not all growth. You know? It's true. Yeah. Sometimes I still wish the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's a journey, right? Like, yeah. you're, you're not going to be that perfect, you know, person now. Like, it's all about learning yeah. and growing as you go. One day, maybe. Yeah. And you can strive for that. Like, yeah. Said, yeah. Uh, and then the track, the, so this was cool. This, this caught me by surprise because I saw... I thought I read this initially as means to quit my job, <laughs> but it's two different tracks. It's two means. different songs, yeah. and I'm still like juggling whether or not I'm gonna like list quit my job as like a song on the track list, or it's just gonna show up at the end. Yeah, but yeah it means to me. Um, I had done a show, I think it was with a uh, mellow thing at Unmodern Industries. Mm-hmm. I think that was the show. Or it was the one before that. And I was just, yeah. And I was just up there thinking, damn, like, the reaction of people, like, vibing with my shit, just, like, I don't know if there's much that means more to me than, like, this feeling. And I kind of was thinking, I want a song where I can, like, express that live. Mm -hmm. And that fell into place. And Quit My Job was the beat for Means to Me. Mm -hmm. First, because Mikey made, like, two beats with similar loops but he didn't save the beat he made for quit my job before he changed it and i was like all right fuck it dude i'm gonna loop what i got (laughs) and make a fucking like quick 16 8 bar whatever it is song at the end so that fell together and uh it means to me like i feel like really fleshes out the more positive stuff on the album i talk about nixed and his daughter uh but i also talk about like family that i necessarily don't or well blood family members i don't necessarily consider family so it's like a lot of just this uh position i'm in means a lot to me you know and like the person i've become because of the good and the bad means a lot to me yeah and then i feel like quit my job just really like was a cool little vibe to end it with it was it was perfect. Like, that's what I did. I was like, it just, it and I got to quit my job like four days after I made that song. It was great. It was great. Uh, so yeah, it's a really great project. All uh, so eight slash nine tracks because of the last. You know, I, you might want to do like a yeah, like don't list it and just make it. People be like, yeah, oh shit, know, it just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm sure like the because of you know the quit my job and ending the way it is, I feel like 
it's it's not like it just feels like there's a more story to tell and so there's a continuation of you know obviously you're going to be releasing more music of course um, yeah what are you looking forward to creating now that you're finishing this one hey man uh me and mellow got another album coming uh i got a couple projects hopefully some new vista cave stuff man yeah. i'm really excited about some new vista cave stuff uh nick's told me he's like trying to lean more into show promoting so i don't know if we're gonna get any new Nick's. vista nick soon <laughs> yeah. mikey wants a skyfall too so you know nice, nice and then there's wilson street too which just needs to kind of have a couple of things tied away so there's a lot of stuff you know yeah whenever we talk to you on the show you're always talking about how you have so much stuff planned out already. yeah so, it's so. all about the execution and then for Skyfall, you wanted to make a few videos, right? What, what are you thinking of making? So we're thinking the first video will probably be for Ego, because that's going to be, well, depending on when this drops, either it was the single that just dropped or it's the next single. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're thinking of doing that and hopefully having that out the day the album drops and then just kind of seeing how it performs to whatever comes next. Yeah. Have you, you've made a few, have you made videos before? I've made a few, but that's like where where I lack the most, probably. Like, yeah. No, I mean that's a tough one too, because it's it's more like because the way that videos are digested these days, like music videos, it's like it's either like a, you know classic or like nobody cares. You know yeah, what I'm saying? and like, it's like very very like hefty cost for mm -hmm. very little ROI. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, it's tough. It's mm. tough for an artist. Um, I think the last one I made was for Monologue. No, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. Um, so is there anything else you want people to know about Skyfall? Just to listen, man. Hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, hopefully, uh, and when are you planning? Do you want, do you want to release this video? When, when, when are they going to, is it going to be out the album out already? Or are you just going to be like teasing the album? Maybe we'll, we'll tease you guys a little. All right. Tickle, tickle. <laughs> <laughs> so coming soon, Skyfall. Kid Vista, thank you for sitting down with me. Thank and you guys about it. for having me. Thank yeah. you. And check them out, uh, at Kid Vista on Instagram and, you know, various appearances on The Rodriguez Show. All of them. <laughs> <laughs>